In this video, we'll go over familiarizing ourselves with the user interface to get the most out of the program. We'll be going over the basics of home designer's menus, toolbar buttons, hotkeys, and the library browser. We also have further videos and resources that dive into these elements in more detail. Along the top left of the program, we have the menus. These menus contain most of the tools we can use in the program and are sorted based on their purpose and use. If we click on the menu, we'll see a drop down list of tools, many of which have a picture beside them. These icons representing the purpose of the tool are used when these tools are placed on the toolbars below the menus, which we'll go over later in the video. The first one is a common menu seen in many other programs called the File menu. Click on the title of the menu to expand and view the options within. Here we have tools relating to our file itself, including starting a new plan, opening an existing plan, and saving our work. We can also find export and import options here, along with print. To the right, we have the Edit menu. Here are options including undo and redo that recall our previous action, copy and paste, delete, select objects, and the edit area tool. This is also where we can go to get to default settings, which gives us access to modify the default settings for a variety of the tools used in Home Designer. Next, we have the build menu. This menu has many tools for placing different kinds of objects in our plan. Most of the selections in this menu open submenus that hold a variety of related tools. Many objects, like Windows, have a variety of subtype options to choose from. Following build is the terrain menu, which has tools for creating and modifying the terrain surrounding our structure. These tools can't be used until we first create a terrain perimeter in our plan. Next, we have the library menu. These options here allow us to locate and manage the objects found in the library browser. The 3D menu has tools to create and control 3D views in our plan. This menu allows us to choose the type of camera view we want to make, has the options for mouse controls for navigating 3D views, as well as modifying materials, lighting, and other render settings in the camera views. The CAD menu is next which contains tools for drawing CAD lines and shapes, dimension lines, and text tools to help add detail and notes to our plan views. The Tools menu has options for controlling the appearance and display of our plan, as well as space planning and material list tools, among others. The View menu has options for forcing our display to refresh, as well as toggling on and off a number of elements of the program's interface, including the library browser, the tool palette, the scroll bars, and the reference grid. The window menu has controls for the size and magnification of our current view. The tile controls let us control the tiling layout of multiple views in the program, or we can use tab windows to maximize a single tab. The bottom of the window menu lets us switch between our active views. Finally, we have the help menu. The Help menu has learning resources for our home designer software. For example, clicking Launch Help allows us to easily search every chapter of the reference manual for specific terms, and we'll get a list of results based on what we type. It's also important to note the Help button at the bottom of most dialogues in the program. This will also open up the reference manual and bring you to the specific page that refers to the dialogue that you're in. In addition to Launch Help, the Help menu also contains links to additional resources on our website and license management. Below the program menus are the toolbars. These toolbar buttons provide quick and easy access to a variety of commonly used tools in the program, acting as shortcuts to the tools in the various menus above. By default, if we click on a toolbar button that has multiple child tools, the first tool in the list is selected. So if we click on the Wall tool, the child tools should populate in the tool palette, which by default is going to be on the left side of the program. We can see that the straight exterior wall tool has been selected, and if we want, we can choose any of the other child tool options, like the room divider. 
The tool palette can be toggled on and off in the view menu. If we go to the view menu and click tool palette, it will hide the tool palette, giving us more space in our plan. However, clicking a tool with any child tools will bring the tool palette back. Another way to access some commonly used tools is through hotkeys, also called keyboard shortcuts. We can see these hotkey assignments listed next to the tools themselves in the menus at the top of the program. For example, if we go to the File menu, the Save tool can be called by holding the Control key on our keyboard and pressing the S key. On Macs, this will usually be assigned to the Command key instead of Control. If there is a keyboard shortcut assigned to a specific tool, it will appear next to the tool itself in the menu. Some of the function keys also have commands. For example, F6 will call the Fill Window tool, and the F5 key will refresh our display. The last part of the program we'll go over is the library browser. It can sometimes be hidden to free up space to view our design. There are a number of ways to bring the library browser back if it's been closed, like going to the View menu and clicking Library Browser. We can also toggle it on by right-clicking on any empty space on the toolbars and checking on Library Browser. Or we can use the hotkey for the library, which by default is Control-L. In the library itself, we can click on the triangle beside a category to see its contents and click on the triangle again to collapse it. We can continue expanding categories until we find the items we're looking for. Alternatively, we can type in the search bar at the top to look for anything more specifically. Type a word and press enter and we'll see the results appear in the Filter Results section. The Folders section will also be filtered, only showing folders with items from our search results in them. Any item from our filter results with a globe on it means it's from a bonus or manufacturer catalog we haven't downloaded into the program yet. Some of these are free, and some cost a small fee. So if we try and use one of these items, it will prompt us to log into our Chief Architect account. If we'd rather not see these online items, we can toggle these items showing in our search results by clicking on the Include Web Results button. This concludes our video going over the basics of Home Designer's user interface.